When I count to ten, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear you. One, two, three, four. Damn you to hell, Samuel! A bright flash. Lights rise. A huge pile of smoking ashes rests in the middle of the kitchen. Lorene, a demure housewife in her early thirties, stares down at the ashes incredulously. She bends and lifts a pair of spectacles from the remains. She ever so slowly backs away. Samuel? Uh... Samuel? Don't fool with me now. I'm not in the mood. Samuel? I didn't mean it, really. I'll be good if you come back. But come on now, dinner's waiting. <laughs> now stop your foolishness and let's sit down. Don't be cross with me. I mean, sure, I, I forgot to pick up your shirt for tomorrow. I can wash another. I'll do it right now. Right now. Sam? You hear me? Maybe I did never intend to wash your shirt. Florence, honey, could you come on down for a moment? There's been a little accident. Uh, quickly, please. Uh-huh. Lorraine hangs up the phone. She gets a broom and a dustpan. She hesitantly approaches the pile of ashes. She gets down on her hands and knees and takes a closer look. She is startled by a sudden knock on the door. She slowly walks across the room like a possessed child. Lorraine lets in Florence, her best friend, an upstairs neighbor. Florence, also a housewife in her early 30s, wears a floral house coat and a pair of oversized slippers. Without acknowledgement, Lorraine proceeds to saunter back across the room. Hey! Uh, uh, you all right? Uh, what happened? Smell like you burned something. What the devil is that? Samuel? It's Samuel, I think. What's he done done now? No, it's him. It's him. Child, what's wrong with you? Did he finally drive you out your mind? I knew something was gonna happen sooner or later. Uh, dial 911, Florence. Why? You scared me. Dial 911. I think I killed him. What? I killed him. I killed Samuel. Uh, he's dead, dead. Come again? Hmm. Wait, oh, no. Stop it. I don't have time for this. I'm going back upstairs. I know how Samuel hates to find me here when he gets home. You're not gonna get me this time. Y'all can have your little joke. I'm not part of it. Did you really do it this time? I don't know how or why it happened. It just did. Why are you whispering? I don't want to talk too loud. Something else is liable to disappear. Where's his body? There! <laughs> you burned him? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Either you did or you didn't. What you mean? You talking murder, Lorraine? Not oven settings. Mm, you think I'm playing? How many times have I heard you talk about being rid of him? 
how many times have we sat at this table, laughed about the many ways we could do it, and how many times have you done it? None. A pair of cheap spectacles. That's all that's left. And you know how much I hate these. You ever seen him without them? No. He counted to four and disappeared. I swear to God. Don't bring the Lord into this just yet. <laughs> Sit down now. What you got to sip on? I don't know whether to have a stiff shot of scotch or a, a glass of champagne. Florence takes a bottle of sherry out of the cupboard and pours them each a glass. Lorene downs hers, then holds out her glass for more. He was... Take your time. Standing there. Uh, and... He exploded. Did that motherfucker hit you again? No, he exploded. Boom, right in front of me. He was shouting like he does, being all colored. Then he raised up that big, crusty hand to hit me and... Poof! He was gone. I barely got words out and I'm looking down at a pile of ash. Florence builds back her sherry. She wipes her forehead and pours them both another. Child, I'll give you this. In terms of color, you've matched my husband, Edgar, the story king. He came in at six Sunday morning talking about he hit someone with his car and had spent all night trying to outrun the police. I felt sorry for him. Turns out he was playing poker with his paycheck, no less. You don't want to know how I found out, but I did. You think I'm lying? I certainly hope so, Lorraine. For your sake, my heart. Samuel always said if I raised my voice, something horrible would happen, and it did. I'm a witch. The devil spawn. <laughs> You've been watching too much television. Oh, never seen anything like this on television. Wish I had, then I know what to do. There's no question. I'm a witch. Uh. Child, don't tell me you've been messing with the Mojo women again. What did I tell you? He's not coming back. Oh, no. How could he? It would be a miracle. Two in one day, I, I could be canonized. Worse yet, he could be. All that needs to happen is for my palms to bleed, and I'll be eternally remembered as Saint Lorene. The patron of battered wives. Women from across the country will make pri pilgrimages to me, laying pies and pot roast at my feet and asking the good saint to make their husbands turn to dust. How often does a man like Samuel get damned to hell and go? <laughs> you smoking crack. Do I look like I am? Hell, I've seen old biddies creeping out of the crack houses talking about they doing church work. Oh, Florence, please be helpful. I'm very close to the edge. I don't know what to do next. Do I sweep him up? Do I call the police? Do I... The phone rings. Oh, God! You gonna let it ring? No. What if it's his mother? She knows. The phone continues to ring. They sit until it stops. They both breathe a sigh of relief. I should be mourning. I should be praying. I should be thinking of the burial. But all that keeps popping into my mind is what will I wear on television when I share my horrible and wonderful story with the studio audience? <laughs> He's made me a killer, Florence. And you remember what a gentle child I was. I'm a killer. I'm a killer. I'm a killer. I wouldn't throw that word around too lightly, even in jest. Talk like that gets around. Mm. You think they'll lock me up? A few misplaced words and I'll probably get the death penalty. Isn't that what they do with women like me, murderesses? Folks have done time for less. Oh, thank you. Just what I needed to hear. <laughs> Girl, what did you expect? That I was going to throw up my arms and congratulate you? Why'd you have to go and lose your mind at a time of day, this time of day at least? While I got a pot of rice on the stove and Egg is about to walk in the door and wonder where his goddamn food is. And he's going to stony in on me about all the nothing I've been doing during the day and why I can't work. Then he'll mention how to clean. You know, whoa, how clean you keep your home. And I, I don't know. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna look him in the eye. How can I look him in the eye without... I'm sorry, Florence, really. It's out of my hands now. She takes Florence's hands and squeezes it. You swear on your right tit. I swear on both of them. Both your breasts, Laureen! You know what'll happen if you're lying. Both your breasts, Laureen? Yeah. <sighs> Sweet Jesus. He must have done something really terrible. No more than usual. I just couldn't take being hit one more time. You've taken a thousand blows from that man. Couldn't you have turned the cheek and waited? I'd have helped you pack, like we talked about. <gasps> I could blow on him and he'd disappear across the linoleum. Just like that. Should I be feeling remorse or regret or some other R word? I'm, I'm strangely jubilant. <laughs> like on prom night when Samuel and I first made love. Oh. That's the feeling. Is oh. it? Like a ton of bricks been lifted from my shoulders, yeah. Really? Yeah. You bitch. What? We made a pact. I know. You've broken it. We agreed that when things got real bad for the both of us, we, you know, together. <sighs> Do I have to go back upstairs to that? What next? I thought you'd tell me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Florence begins to walk around the room, nervously touching objects. Lorraine sits, wringing her hands and mumbling softly to herself. Now you've got me, Lorraine. I'm truly at a loss for words. Everybody always told me, keep your place, Lorraine. My place. The silent spot on the couch with a wine cooler in my hand and a pleasant smile that warmed the heart. All this time, I didn't know why he was so afraid for me to say anything, to, mm. to speak up. And poof! I've never been by myself except for them two weeks when he won the office pool and went to Reno with his cousin Mitchell. He wouldn't tell me where he was going until I got that postcard with a cowboy smoking a hundred cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Didn't Sonny Larkin look good last week at Caroline's? <laughs> he looked good, didn't he? She nervously picks up Samuel's jacket, which is hanging on the back of the chair. She clutches it unconsciously. No, no, don't wrinkle that. That's his favorite jacket. He'll kill me. Put it back. I'm sorry. There! Ha! <laughs> Look at that. He said he didn't go to the movies last night. Working late. Hmm. Picture of his motorcycle, social security card, driver's license, and look at that. From our wedding. I looked good, didn't I? There were some good things. And out of my mouth, those words made him disappear. All these years, sand. Just words, Florence. That's all they were. Mm, I'm afraid I won't ever get to say those words. I'll start resenting you, honey. I'm afraid won't anything change for me. I've been to that place. Yeah. But now I wish I could relax these old lines for, for a minute, maybe. Edgar has never done me the way Samuel did you, but he sure did take that better part of my life. Not yet, Florence. <sighs> I have the children to think of, right? You can think up a hundred things before. Come upstairs with me. We'll wait together for Edgar, and then you can spit out your words and... I can't do that. Yes, you can. Come on now. Well, I guess my mornings are not going to be any different. If you can say for certain, then I guess they won't be. I couldn't say that. But you got a broom and a dustpan. You don't need any more than that. He was a bastard and nobody will care that he's gone. Phone's gonna start ringing soon. People are gonna start asking soon and they'll care. What's your crime? Speaking your mind? Maybe I should mail him to his mother? I mean, I owe her that. 
I feel bad for her. She didn't, she didn't understand how it was. I can't just throw him away and pretend like it didn't happen, can I? I didn't see anything but a pile of ash. As far as I know, you got a little careless and burned a chicken. He was always threatening not to come I back. Heard him. It would have been me eventually. Yeah. Oh, I should call the police or someone. Why? What you gonna tell him? About all those times he refused to help? About all those nights you slept in my bed because you were afraid to stay down here? Oh, about the time he nearly took your eye because you flipped the television channel? No. You got it, girl. Goodbye to the fatty meats and the salty food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye to the bourbon and the bologna sandwiches. Goodbye to the smell of his feet, his breath, and his bowel movements. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Samuel? Just checking. <laughs> Bye, Samuel. I'll let the police know that he's missing. Tomorrow. Why not the next day? <laughs> Chicken's warmed in the oven. You're welcome to stay. Child, I got a piece of rice on the stove right now. Kids are probably acting out and Edgar will... Listen, I'll stop by tomorrow. For dinner? Edgar wouldn't stand for that. Cards, maybe. Cards. The women hug for a long moment. Florence exits. Loreen stands over the ashes for a few moments, contemplating what to do. She finally decides to sweep them under the carpet and then proceeds to set the table and sit down to eat her dinner. End of play. Surgeon Paul that friend of mine Caught this devil in this sky Still deep dished her in her pot All them things made me hot Make me sit and wonder why I never go I never go